all of us um, fulfill a variety of different roles throughout our lives. Um, it might be mother, daughter, um, could be teacher. For me, it's pastor, son. Um, the, one of the roles, probably the role that I, that I have enjoyed the most in my life is the role of dad or the role of parent. Um, I loved being a parent. Up until my children got their driver's license. After that, not so much. <laughs> Anybody relate to that? Um, up until the time they got their driver's license, I was pretty sure who they were hanging out with, when they were hanging out with them, and what they were doing. After that, it was like I had no idea, and it scared me to death. And I realized at that moment that uh, I was more of a control freak than I ever was willing to confess. In fact, up to that particular point in my life, I thought, you know, I'm not a control freak. I can, I can kind of let things go, you know, and I don't have to look over people's shoulders. I don't have to have my fingers and everything. I can trust the process. But when it came to my children, I'm a control freak. And it bothered me that, that I no longer had the ability to... Um, you know, I called it protection, and it probably that was probably the essence of what I was feeling. But it was really this, I wanted to control them. I wanted to protect them by controlling them. Now, I tell you that story um, this morning, because for those of you who may be guests or visitors with us, we have been, since the first of the year, we have been um, in a sermon series entitled, Unpacking the Meaning of Lord. I'm convinced that... Um, most Christians don't understand what it means to believe in or to trust in Jesus, to trust in God as Lord. So what we've been doing is trying to understand what that means. What we have discovered, we have discovered that uh, lordship requires a choice. You have to make a choice with regards to lordship. You're going you're gonna, to, um, something is going to be lord of your life. And by not choosing is a choice. You have to choose who Lord, who the Lord will be in your life. Um, choose, or lordship leads to reward. Well, that was another principle that we have discovered. Uh, what we've also discovered is that reward that we can expect is, not one, is the one that God wants for us, thankfully, rather than what, what we want, specifically. And last week we learned that lordship leads to transformation. Remember that? The transformation of our hearts or the transformation of our desires. Well, this morning's lordship principle is this. Lordship leads to letting go. Lordship leads to letting go. And for those of you that are parents or maybe struggling with that, you need to hear this one uh, in particular. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to um, the Old Testament book of Zechariah. And as you're doing that, chapter 4, by the way, and as you're looking at Old Testament book of Zechariah, chapter 4, I'll give you a little history and context for the passage that we're going to be looking at this morning. I don't know how many of you have read the Old Testament book of Zechariah much recently, but um, Zechariah, the, the, the Old Testament book of Zechariah, is really all about the exploits of this prophet named Zechariah. God raised up Zechariah during a time in the history of Israel when they not only needed a prophet, but they needed um, someone to encourage them. And I'll tell you why. Um, they, had, they were just coming out of a season where they had been in exile. For 70 years, they had been in exile in a foreign land um, because 70 years prior to that, they had decided that they were just going to try to get by in life all on their own, that they didn't really need God or the ways of God, and that, that choice to kind of abandon God um, led to their being overthrown by this, this um, army, and they were taken as captives into, this, into um, this foreign land, and for all intents and purposes, for almost two generations, they were slaves to this um, conquering army. Now, what I want to point out to you is that this experience, their being taken into captivity, was not a punishment, it was a discipline. You know the difference between the two, right? The difference between punishment and discipline? Punishment is you've done something wrong and you deserve 
to be hurt for it, basically. Yeah, there are different ways to put it. Discipline is I'm allowing you to experience this, or you're going to experience this so that you can learn something. There's a difference between punishment and discipline. They were being disciplined. God allowed them to be taken into captivity um, so that they could learn. Um, so now they were coming out. They're coming out of their discipline after nearly two generations as slaves. And um, some of them were given the privilege of going back into the promised land, into the land of Israel, to reestablish the uh, Jewish culture. And the symbolism of reestablishing the culture was rebuilding the temple. That was the specific thing that they were being, the first group was being sent back. And the first group, among the first group, were Zechariah and his grandfather, by the way. So they were going back to rebuild the temple, but there was something even more fundamental going on. Um, remember, this is just a symbol of rebuilding the culture. Rebuilding the temple was a symbol of rebuilding the culture. But here's the problem. After 70 years of being slaves for all intents and purposes, of dealing with their own guilt because they realized the reason why they were all messed, they were living in the mess that they were living in was because of their own actions. So they were feeling guilty for 70 years. But they were also dealing with um, the abuse that had been heaped upon them by their captors for 70 years. And I don't know if, how, if you've ever met someone who has been in an abusive situation, but if anyone that has been in an abusive situation, as they start coming out, their circumstance changes, it's hard for them to let go of the identity that, um, that they've accepted in the midst of the abuse. And the same thing was happening with the, with the, um, with the Israelites. They, were, they knew that a new day was dawning, but they still weren't sure whether, they were, number one, they deserved it, and number two, whether they had what it took to live into a victorious future. Well, that's where Zechariah comes in. He basically says this to them. If you read the book, I can boil it down for you very simply. He says, you guys can do this. You got this. But he takes it one step further. He doesn't just say, hey, you can do this. He's not just their cheerleader. He doesn't say, you can do this. You got this. He actually says, he says, um, I'm going to tell you why you can do this and why you got that. And that leads us to our passage of Scripture for today, which is Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. And here, it, it, the Holy Spirit comes upon Zechariah, and he speaks this word of encouragement over the people of God. He says, never forget, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It is not by might or by power that you're going to rebuild this temple. There's going to be all kinds of things that happen that are going to be discouragement, roadblocks that are going to say, I, and you're going to be tempted to say, I can't do this, it's too hard. Don't you believe it? You can do it. Not by might, nor by power, but by what? By my spirit, says the Lord. He says there's, there's going to be time in the coming years, and in the, in the coming days, years, and, uh, that you're, it's going to feel like you don't have the power to rebuild the culture and be, rebuild your identity. But don't you believe it, because it's not by might or by power, but by my spirit that you will rebuild your culture, that you will re be, rebuild your identity. In other words, what God was saying to them is, it's my responsibility to rebuild the temple. And it's going to be me that rebuilds the culture. You are going to be the vessels. Now, you need to hear what I'm just saying, because right there, you heard the, the defining moment. It's God's responsibility to rebuild the temple and rebuild the culture. It's going to be your responsibility to be the vessel. Now, what does that mean? 
Basically, it means, first of all, what is a vessel? A vessel is a tool, right? It, it, and if you think about it from that perspective, you begin to realize that it is not the tool's responsibility to do a job. It is the master craftsman, God's responsibility to do the job. He's just going to use the, you as a tool to fulfill the job. Now, eventually, that analogy breaks down, doesn't it? Because you are not an inanimate object. You have, uh, uh, you're not just used. You have to make yourself available to be used. So you do have responsibility. You have the response. Well, you see, when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord, you are yielding to God. You're yielding yourself to God as a vessel or as a tool. So you do have responsibility, and that is to yield to Jesus as Lord, to, to yield to God as Lord. But ultimately, the result or what is accomplished, that's not on you. That's on the Lord, not by might, nor by power, not by your smarts, not because you're all that, but because He's all that. You see the difference? You are the vessel. God's saying to them, and He's saying to us, you can do this, because I've got this, whatever this is, right? Because here's the deal, you guys got all kinds of this in your life. You've got, there's things you feel, there are things that you feel responsible for that aren't your responsibility. And that's where this principle comes in. The principle of lordship leads to letting go. You need to know that the, that the results, if you have accepted Jesus as Lord, the results aren't your responsibility. That sounds weird, doesn't it? But it's biblical. The results aren't your responsibility. Your responsibility is to be yielded as the vessel and leave the results up to God. I'm telling you right now, if you can grasp a hold of that truth that I just described to you, it will change your life. Because most of what you find yourself anxious over every day is you believing that you're responsible for the results. Stop it. Lordship leads to letting go. Letting go of what you're not responsible for and focusing on what you are responsible. I needed to hear that so much when my kids were moving from ad adolescence into adulthood. Lisa and I had done the best job we could to raise them. I'm not going to speak for her, but the problem with all that was I made a lot of mistakes while we were raising them. And as I felt myself losing control. I, also, I realized what I was losing was the opportunity to make up for the mistakes I had made. And all the while, while that was happening, as I was feeling this anxiety over my not having control over my children anymore, the Lord was saying, Craig, I know this is hard for you to believe, but I love them more than you do. Let go of them. I got this. I got them. And focus on what you do have control over. Let go of that which you never really had control over in the first place, which are the results. And focus on that which you do control. You know what those things are? Being simple and being an authentic reflection of Jesus. You need me to say that again? This isn't complicated. As a Christian, what you have responsibility over is choosing to be a simple, authentic reflection of Jesus in everything that you do. Every person that you meet, every role that you fulfill, 
That's it. Do that and leave the rest up to him. For it is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, there are times as I'm preaching and it seems so simple. And then I realize when I start applying it to my whole life, I realize it's not, though it may be simple, it is not easy. I still want to control my children. (laughs) I see them making stupid choices and, and then I think about my own mom and dad thinking how many times they've were frustrated with me making stupid choices. And then I realized, Lord, that's that's just an example of really the privilege that we have to let go of all the things that we struggle so mightily to try to control that we can't. Help us, Jesus, to to be mindful every day of that which we have responsibility for. And and that is to be yielded to you as a vessel. That is to be a simple and authentic reflection of your love to a world that needs to know that those things are real. That needs to know that you are real. That's not, it's simple, but it's not easy. And for that, we ask for your strength, for your hope, and for some continual nudges now and then. A reminder, we love you, Jesus. Amen.